hope it's a mountain. And I hope that I've just been climbing up the mountain and that it's just been hard or discouraging. And my hope is that I'm cresting the mountain. And we're gonna bring a whole bunch of momentum down it on the other side. Great performance from Jim, and a lot of, lot of expectations as always when uh, this gentleman hits the trail. And the 31-year-old from Flagstaff, Arizona, the three-time Western States 100 champion. American women have been doing very well here. American men have been on the podium, but we have yet to secure a W. The Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc is the Super Bowl of trail running. It's huge, it's international, and maybe similar to the Boston Marathon. It happens every August in Chamonix, France, one of the most spectacular settings. You arrive in the city a few days before the race in Chamonix and you've got flags from every country of participants there and it's just electrifying atmosphere and people are so excited. And over the last 15 years, this race has really become the keystone competitive environment where all the best athletes show up. And American men have not performed to our potential on this stage. Most American observers would agree that Jim Walmsley is the person who has the best chance to win. I want to have the fight and to keep going and to dig and dig and dig. The places where you really grow are the ones that keep kicking you in the teeth. After Western States, when the first big flood came through over here, and I went for a night run for UTMB training, and we, I hit this with a headlight, and like that direction, I couldn't even recognize my own backyard. It was like gone. Dude, this forest gets dark. <laughs> so I'm like, one of my first runs ever. I got caught. And like, it was like this sort of lighting, but when you're actually in the trees, it's way darker, and I thought I had enough time. I did not. I wonder if I took us down the wrong way. I think what motivates Jim is a really good challenge that maybe himself or other people might not think he can do. Just something that's really hard to reach for. Um, high expectations. I think that gets him really excited to work towards really big goals. I think what motivates Jim is to be one of the best of all time. He has single-handedly changed the sport in a lot of ways. He's had some of the best performances in ultra running history and he's rewritten the record books. One of the things that I really admire about Jim is that it often takes him several tries to get it right. He fails a lot in his career. Of course, those failures are vastly overshadowed by the incredible successes that he's had, but he has low moments. He's dropped out of races. He's famously made wrong turns that have resulted in him not winning races, but all those stories, I think, create a much better story of when he is successful. It's born out of adversity and Jim is not one to shy away from failure. In fact, he always embraces it, learns from it, comes back and avenges those failures with great successes. Um. Coming onto the scene in basically 2015-16, mainly 2016, kind of maybe it started with a little bit of a Babe Ruth point to the stands and saying, Western States is what I'm gonna go win. came out so forward and would state his goals to everybody and 
which were super outlandish at the time because he was kind of changing the face of trail running and everybody kind of was just shocked by it. He sets the biggest goals possible. He looks at the fastest times ever run at the biggest races and he says, I think I can run faster. I think that I was hesitant at first and just thought he had a really big ego and that was a bit of a turn off. But I mean, it was kind of amazing to see that when he did say he was gonna do something more often than not, he would do it. absolutely smashing races to get there, but then consequently also falling on my face on the stage too. So it provided a lot of drama, excitement, but at the same time, from my perspective, maybe a little unfulfilled business of, I feel like I'm running great, I'm crushing it, but then when the day comes for Western States, I just two years in a row didn't figure it out. And that's probably the beginning of a little bit of the evolution of focus within the sport. No. It feels like home. Familiar. Even though I don't think I've ever been on this ride. Yeah, it was kind of cool to pull up uh, my Strava heat map the other day. And uh, I got a lot covered in Flagstaff. Trail map looks really good. All the social trails, and then there's even like little tiny little red lines every now and then. And it's like, oh, I actually remember those stories specifically of like that was a big bushwhack down or like yeah that definitely did not connect i didn't make the chemex i made a single pour over which means i didn't make jess a coffee this morning but i haven't been back home yet to hear any crap about it. It's gonna be good. So I came out to Arizona to see the Grand Canyon. Uh, I hadn't been since I was 11 and just getting into trail running, it being such a force of landscape and just grand. Jim had mentioned um, potentially coming out and running in the Grand Canyon, and I ended up flying to Arizona, and he had planned this super big, elaborate trip. So we went down to Sedona, and then up to the Grand Canyon, and through the slot canyons up in Page, and I was just blown away by the whole experience. That helped me to get to know him better, and. I think I saw a different side of him that maybe not a lot of other people see um, and kind of just met the real Jim through that experience. Where is the real Jim? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, he's at his core just super kind and generous and really goofy. They smell like vanilla. Lots of These things are good for pointing out objects on the mountain, bird, and sword fighting. Tired, I needed some sugar. But then Jess likes coming along and stealing all the cookie dust, so I have to fend her off. I like pistachio for the record. Understand why I didn't I'm even caught. See so dude, there's Strava segments with this stuff. It's really dorky. Newfound love of skiing. It's caused me lots of blisters, temper tantrum fits on how bad my feet hurt. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with it. I'm pretty quick going uphill. I can go. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. I'm 
this is also doing like really good. I've essentially, we've started using poles in December. Poles and pack is the life for me. I think I've learned the hard way after last UTMB that I just need to become one with the poles. Motivation and the why is extremely important because all these races get really hard at some point or another. And that motivation, unfortunately for me, comes in usually failure before success. Um, there's something about things not working perfectly, not going right, being hard, getting my ass kicked that I like, I guess. So the first time Jim ran UTMB was in 2017. He ran at the front of the race with the great Francois Dane, a four-time champion of UTMB and one of the all-time greats. Jim suffered in the later stages of the event, still managed to finish fifth overall, but I'm sure was very dissatisfied with that fifth place finish. It would be a career highlight for many athletes on the scene, but I think it just gave Jim a lot of hunger to go back and actually run at the front for the entirety of the event. He's returned two more times since 2017 and hasn't been able to make the finish line since. We have received confirmation from the race organization that Jim Walmsley is officially out of the 2021 UTMB. The places where you really grow are the ones that keep kicking you in the teeth. And essentially, um, at this point, it's felt like I've been doing it to myself at UTMB now because three times I've raced UTMB, I feel like I've underperformed every time. And in addition, I feel like I'm not setting myself up for success there. Jim Walmsley has not been able to put it together here at UTMB. I think so in the fall of 2021, we got back from France and yet another UTMB where he had to drop out, unfortunately. I think we are sitting in the living room and he said, I think that the way I'm going to win UTMB is I have to be like the Europeans. So we have to move there. And I'm like, oh, we, we have to move to France? <laughs> Wait, why can't we just go to the San Juans um, in Colorado where we train every year? Those mountains are similar to the Alps. And it's like, no, it's not the same. It is well known and talked about quite often, especially in the professional ranks, that an American male has never managed to win the race. It is not for lack of trying. We've had a lot of our best compete at UTMB over the course of the last several years. And for whatever reason, we haven't been able to put it together. Meanwhile, on the women's side, we've had several champions. Courtney DeWalter, Rory Bozio, Chrissy Mail, Nikki Kimball have all won the race as Americans going over to compete on that stage. But for some reason, the men haven't been able to put it together. For me, UTMB requires adaptation in that I'm not from the mountains. I didn't grow up in the mountains. Everything's not just common sense. I don't think any of it's not learnable. I was really nervous at first, but now I'm pretty excited to move to France. So it's time for a change. Yeah, I'd say Ultra Trail needs more definitions to it. Long hair, a little smelly, not as serious. It's okay to walk. And uh, generally it's a party all the way till the last person finishes. I kind of say it's like digging a hole and essentially it gets tiring, it gets hard and it gets redundant, but you have a goal of digging a hole this big and for some reason you just go, I'm just going to keep digging.
have this motivation, this drive, and no quit to just keep digging and digging and digging. Um, on the right day, there's always more to dig. And that's so rewarding, it's addictive. Running's definitely a part of my identity, which I think I'm comfortable with being right now and kind of a priority in life. I think I also realize it's not gonna be that forever. I think time and time again, why we sign up for these races or do these challenges is because it changes us. And if you're not doing something that challenges you, or questions who you are, I guess, as a person, won't enable you to ever grow. So I think ultimately success is gonna come in the form of just feeling like I had my day. The competition and the other athletes is out of your control. And even on my best day, maybe that's not gonna be good enough to win. So I think winning is not a healthy way of looking at success failure with UTMB. I think growth and learning how to race a trail ultra through the mountains like this efficiently and trying to replicate that is important. Ultimately, I wanna be able to dig on race day and I want to have the fight and to keep going and to dig and dig and dig. If I can bring a big shovel and keep working it all day, uh, ultimately, I'm going to be pretty happy and satisfied with that.